Okay. Um, um, am I the presenter? Hmm. Udava, you started this meeting. Can you make me the presenter so that I can uh, share my application? Well, he started this meeting, so he has the control over who has... Oh? Then why can't I share applications? Oh no, here we go. Okay, I got it. There we go. Ah. Okay, this is the same information. It's just a little neater. And it goes into more detail as far as the uh, material part. Uh, I put more detail on the, the uh, diagram I just put on the board, on the spiritual side. But this one has more detail on the material side. So everybody's following this, okay? Everyone's okay with this now? Ready to go on? Oh my goodness, 12 o'clock already? Time flies when you're having fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we're going to discuss the three modes. Because this is basic to astrology. Ah, one more point before we leave this. <clears throat> so the Lord incarnates in three principal forms in the material world as Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva. And they are in charge of the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance, respectively. And we're going to explain all that in a minute. But the point I want to make before I move on is that there are many, many more incarnations in the material world. Uh, thousands. Uh, and there are 10 or 12 principal incarnations. And those incarnations are the personalities or individuals or uh, spiritual force behind the planets and the signs in astrology. In other words, astrology isn't mechanical. Huh? 
It's not impersonal, it's personal. And the personalities are different incarnations of the Lord. They're not mundane persons. So all the planets, all the signs, the houses, all the different elements of astrology represent some aspect or expansion of the Supreme Lord. That's the key to understanding Vedic astrology. And that's the whole reason why I got into all this, was to just show that. <laughs> um, so let's go on and take a look at the three modes of material nature and how the laws of karma are derived from them. I'm going to make another big diagram. Bob, I have a question. Yes. Um, the, um, the, the entities that are in, in the material realm, yeah. are they um, carbon-based life forms, or biological life forms like us? It doesn't matter what kind of body they take. They, they take a body according to the um, conditions on the world where they go to get the results of their karma, whatever that is. So if they're on planet Earth, they might be carbon-based, but if they're on another planet, they might be based on plasma or, or pure energy or something like that. Um, that's why when, when, you know, when we go to other planets, we don't often see like, you know, critters running around. <laughs> but maybe their bodies are made out of something completely different. You know? The laws of nature are different on different planets. They're just right? vessels for consciousness, right? The body. Yeah, that's all. But Containers. We're not be able to see them with our carbon eyes. Exactly. Our eyeballs. Yeah. I mean, we, our eyes are adapted for our particular biosphere, our conditions of life. That doesn't mean they're going to work the same on another planet. Uh, like, we can't go to the moon or another planet without wearing a spacesuit. Our bodies aren't adjusted to that. You know, but people who are, or creatures whose bodies are from that place, they can live there no problem. I mean, the people on the sun, their bodies are made of, of fire, plasma, you know, very high temperature. And uh, you know, there's so much energy available on the sun, they have very advanced uh, capabilities. But anyway, okay, back to the three modes of nature. Everybody okay here? Okay, well, that's good. Okay, so we have uh, Vishnu. Oops, Brahma and Shiva. They are in charge of goodness, passion, and ignorance. The cosmic function of these three modes are maintenance, creation, and destruction. Like we were talking about yesterday, every material arising or existence comes into being at a certain point, is created at a certain point in time. Then it's maintained for a specific interval, and then it's finally destroyed or transformed into something else. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. Energy is, is conserved in our universe. So the energy that goes up to make one object is like recycled and it forms another object. Last, last night we were talking about the leaves yeah. It's like the leaves grow on the trees in the summer and then they fall off in the autumn and then they're composted during the winter and then by the next summer they were soiled. And new plants can grow from that and so on and so on. <laughs> so that's the way nature works. Those three modes are in everything and they are everywhere. And you'll see them again and again and again and again, because everything goes through creation, maintenance, and destruction. Those are the three phases of time in the material world. <clears throat> so, with respect to each individual object, it has a particular time and, and form of creation, 
then a particular kind of maintenance, and then a specific type of destruction at the end. Okay. So these three modes, which in Sanskrit are called sattva, rajas, and tamas. We find that everything that exists has these three modes. Okay? In terms of karma, let's say this is cosmic function. But in terms of karma, goodness leads to elevation. 